Okay, well, Charles Dumas is the head of international research at Lombard Street Research. He's keeping a sharp eye on proceedings in Paris, informed by more than 40 years of experience as an economist and financial markets professional. I'm pleased to say he's in the studio with me now. How do she, you do? I'm good. You said she got it wrong. Well, she got it wrong on the <laughs> quote. Yeah, what Churchill said is, George Orwell is better than war war. And you take away the rhyme, you take away the joke. Chat, chat just doesn't do it. Oh, OK. Well, fair enough. So but, uh, tell me, what are you looking for in this meeting this weekend? Well, very little, because um, the main source of the imbalances remains the um, fixed exchange rates and undervaluation of China and Germany. Um, and um, at the moment, things are going fine. Um, so everyone's going to feel OK. Uh, and so they won't do anything, um, because um, China and Germany will only change their policies if they feel pain, which is, they're not going to do this year. And it seems that you know, we speak about uh, then G20 finance minister, central bank is actually taking action. They actually haven't even decided on the causes of the imbalances yet. I mean, last November we saw a great deal of disagreement as to whether it was the U.S. or China mm -hmm. creating these imbalances. Do you think we'll see the same thing this time around? Absolutely. The, the Americans, rightly in my view, think that the excess saving and the undervaluation of um, China and Germany is the main problem. Um, the Chinese and the Germans, of course, simply say, it's not us, mate, you know, it's your problem for running deficits. So what needs to be done about these issues, deficit, well, trade, well, debt? What's going to happen is that the Chinese and the Germans are going to get inflation because um, if you have an undervalued exchange rate and you try to stimulate domestic demand, then you get excess demand mm. and inflation. So. Um, that's what they've got. And uh, because of the American um, quantitative easing policy, the inflation is um, being aggravated because the mm. Americans are saying, hey, wait a second, um, it's a choice between your inflation and our deflation, and we choose to have your inflation rather than our deflation. And then you have the likes of Brazil, finance minister was speaking out ahead of this meeting, and he was saying, look, we are just as worried about loose monetary policy, quantitative easing in the US, as we are about the issue of China's currency. Yeah, well, of course he is. Um, he has every reason to worry about everything and no reason to antagonize anyone. So he, he says that he's worried about both. But we're talking here, I'm talking here about cause and effect. I'm not talking about what a good diplomat will say. Uh, and also, we got uh, some news on China. They've, they've made a decision to raise their bank reserve requirement mm -hmm. by half a point. Uh, what do you make of this? Is it going to be effective in reining in inflation, property prices still sky high? Um, I don't think the reserve requirement itself um, matters very much, but what is clear is that Chinese are very worried about the inflation mm. um, because for the first time for several years now we had a significant drop in seasonally adjusted um, credit extension in January uh, and the rate of growth has come down sharply uh, and that indicates to me that they may well be uh, operating behind the scenes to curb their credit, which of course is badly needed. Also on the agenda at G20, soaring food prices, commodity prices, you mentioned inflation becoming an increasing risk to global growth. What needs mm. to be done about this? Will it be addressed in a constructive way? Um, I doubt it. Uh, there's not very much they can do. The, the um, American quantitative easing, of course, led to a bunch of people fleeing the dollar into commodities, and this raised food prices in a lot of places. We're seeing an unexpected backwash in mm. terms of Middle Eastern turbulence. Um, which uh, is partly a response, of course, to higher food prices, but also is potentially a cause of higher oil prices. So, um, yeah, there are a lot of difficulties in the world. I read you a quote from French Finance Minister Christine Lagarde. I'm sure you'll, you'll disagree with what she says. But it, it's very succinct because she said, we have a China that saves and exports, a Europe that consumes and grows slowly, and a US that consumes and borrows. Mm -hmm. How much longer can that go on for? Well, I think the answer is about um, nine months, to be precise, till the end of this year. Uh, uh, by the end of this year, China will have slowed down sharply. Germany, which is um, growing on the back of exports, will then slow down sharply, and its inflation will probably subside uh, automatically, uh, and the European economy will subside with it. Um, the United States, in the meantime, is gearing up to do something about its government deficits under the sort of impulse of the um, Republicans claiming suddenly uh, fiscal virtue. And um, as a result, next year is going to see a very sharp slowdown indeed, uh, and um, the imbalances will be reduced, uh, as will be um, the growth that Christine Lagarde was talking about. There you go. Thanks very much for wrapping that up for us. Charles Zuma is director of Lombard Street Research. Thanks very much indeed. Coming up.